Oh, hi. Um, absolutely delighted to, uh, to be able to give this talk today as part of the Collective Futures Unboxed RSA collaboration. So let me just jump up on the main stage. I'm down here, as you can see, at the RSA uh, in John Adams Street in London. Obviously a rather faked one with a few JPEGs, but hey, let's not let that spoil the party. And I would just like to um, kick off with a little video, if that's all right. A month ago, I went to John O'Groats to start a creativity revolution right across the UK with our Ignite 22 Festival of Creativity in School Communities to continue our work with schools across the country. We live streamed an inspiring assembly from the back of a camper van, making it look as if we were on a cardboard Mars base camp in the school playground. We ran creative activities, rocket making, coding, design, and we launched a dynamite rocket. The hype, it went, and the, the kids are just squealing with excitement. But I'm just one dad, and I can't do it all on my own. I need your help. Today in Paisley, the government launched their £120 million Unbox 2022 Festival of Creativity. We'll sort of be there tonight in a camper van outside the Made in Paisley Arts Workshop and chatting with Ken McDonald next door in the world famous Houston Kilt Makers, whose tartan has even been to space. Doing a presentation for school children next January to let them see how to design tartans, how to make kilts. So that's open to some of the Glasgow schools. We're launching our own mission with the non-profit community enterprise Steam Co. I helped co-found with some parents and teachers in my son's school. We want to raise a million quids to inspire a million kids to aim higher than high, powered by their creativity and our Eight, communities. Seven. At 7 p.m. we'll launch a 150 foot high cardboard starship, just like the thousand that Elon Musk wants to take a million of our kids to Mars in in 30 years. We want to put up to 22 of our pop-up Creativity Day drop trucks on the road this year and run a few festivals and creativity sessions with school communities across the country. So if you care, if you care about creativity, children and all our futures, will you chip in a quid and be part of it? Let's ask, what if? Let's start a creativity revolution. So any arts and culture train spotters would know that Dan and Henley went to uh, Sunderland about five or six years ago after the Brexit vote to, to make that speech there. Um, so absolutely delighted to be here today. I'm a fellow of the RSA and have been for about five or six years, apparently for my, uh, my work in education, which I was quite chuffed to uh, be recognised for. Um, my work, my, this part of my life was kicked off by a TED talk by Sir Ken Robinson, reading half a book and going to a festival. The half a book was by this chap, um, Guy Claxton, a book called What's the Point of School, which asked some very interesting questions. With two young children going into primary school, it was quite relevant to me. Um, and going to a festival, which was Camp Bestival, which is basically sort of Glastonbury for, for Guardian reading families like me, basically. But we had lots of fun down there. And I thought, I want this in my kids' school because I am what I call a creative carer. I care about creativity, children and all our futures. And, and that's really what we're talking about here is, is, is trying to identify and celebrate creativity and, 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 and ask that bold question, do people care and are they prepared to do something about it? We've, we use the word art quite a lot. Ironically, the Arts Council took the word art out of their 10-year um, their plan, but we've kept it in because for us, art, art is what we call it when what we do might connect us to somebody else. So we've printed t-shirts, we did a collaboration with JR where people download a template, they draw a heart and then we print out selfies and then JR printed a thousand posters for us. And we've displayed those all over the UK and we're going to be doing another one of those, we'll come back to that in a minute. So art, you could be Grayson Perry throwing cakes at people, it could be, your art could be painting, your art could be photography, your art could be dancing, it could be design, it could be DJing. Your art could be fashion like Victoria Beckham. It could be football like David Beckham. The hands all go up and the children cheer when I put that slide up in a school, believe me. Your art could be cooking. I mean, look at the big bake off and how that connects with people on the TV on a Saturday night. Your art could be coding. And I love talking to, to children in primary schools about this guy here whose job is to make computer games. And I know that Scotland is the world epicentre of the gaming industry. He didn't sit around playing computer games all the time. He watched them. He, he sat down with some mates and they started a company building their own computer games. Cardboard, I do love a bit of cardboard. I've actually got some cardboard here kicking around. If anybody wants a cardboard workshop, I've got a cardboard central down here. And that's a little um, 
model of, a, of Mars or a moon or whatever, or a disco ball, whatever you want it to be. We're doing a lot of work with cardboard at the moment. And we do like a rocket, I must admit. We do like a rocket. Um, Stevenson's rocket, invented by a lad from, uh, from Northumbria who was illiterate at the age of 14. Uh, and he saved a bit of his wages and learned to read and ended up changing the world forever, much more significantly than, than obviously the iPhone or any of that nonsense. Ro robots, we take robots into schools that can solve Rubik's Cubes in a couple of minutes. But what we did, we took all this inspiration and we started running what we call Steam Co Days in my kids' school down here in Paddington. And we got the whole community involved. This was 10 years ago. Um, we had parents who'd not really been in school much before. The kids had a choice of 20 creative activities, spin painting. Uh, that machine was from Chroma Pier, apparently. Ukulele. A ukulele is one of the most impactful things you can do with Pupil Premium, according to a number of head teachers we work with. Getting uplift across the curriculum. We've got a machine that rolls newspapers up to make really strong rods that you can build structures from. We do coding with BBC Microbits, teaching kids to code. The government gave a million away, but they gave them to secondary, not primary. And as Lord Winston and in fact um, Lord Heseltine have said, if you want an industrial strategy for this country, you need to start in primary. But it's so often overlooked. Here's somebody on a cardboard challenge day we did, which ended up on BBC Breakfast. This little girl actually helped build an electric car that we raced at Goodwood on one of these days. And as I say, we do like a rocket. Uh, yes, we do like a rocket. So this is a tour we did of Norfolk schools uh, letting off dynamite rockets at the end of every session. And I must admit, I don't really want to get stuck in a steam or a stem box particularly. I do love that. That little lad there actually is in an independent school and that was the best day of his life, me rocking up with a 15 pound rocket. So that's the impact that we can have on young people's lives. It's quite phenomenal. Um, and as I say, I don't really want to be put in a STEM or a steam box or Mr. Rocket Man or any of that, because for us, it's about engagement and it's about creativity. And if you let a rocket off, all the parents come in, the mums and dads, they're absolutely buzzing. And the schools tell us that they can build on that engagement directly afterwards. That's um, a, another rocket there launched up in, um, up in a school in Camden a couple of weeks ago, secondary school, funnily enough. This book changed my life. My dad found it in an Oxfam bookshop about four boys who didn't want to be coal miners in West Virginia in the 50s. They looked to the sky, they saw the Sputnik satellite and learned to make rockets and ended up working for NASA. And he sold six million copies of that. It's a Universal Studios um, movie. And I've been given the rights to take that into schools to inspire and engage kids and their communities, to help our kids find their art. Because Something that I tell them could help them make a little bit of money one day or a lot of money maybe, help them make some friends, help them make the world a better place. And that's what art is all about, Art Connects. I did a launch, well, I did a pitch at the RSA five or six years ago saying that it's time to not just talk about creativity and education, but we've got to walk the talk. I had a chat with Matthew Taylor. He generously made some films for us and a podcast. And he said, what you're doing is absolutely brilliant, Nick. I'm going to help you make it happen. And it went off to the NHS. <laughs> Bless him. That was, I don't know if he did it just because of that. Um, but this chap, Jeremy Wright, was the culture minister a few years ago he, and his office invited us up to Coventry where he announced the Festival UK 2022 and said we're looking for projects that show the value of art. So I got very excited, rushed back home. We launched the Art Connects year with a whole bunch of teachers and children from across the country. This family is from Leeds, actually, that came to the Houses of Parliament and we had a launch event. We had a fantastic event here, actually, with a school in Bradford where they all created their I Love Art posters. And then with a bit of footage and a, a bit of drone action, we um, we actually filmed that from, from above as part of an Arts Council funded project to demonstrate the power of art to connect. We went to Camp Bestival, did a pop-up week in Leeds, we did pop-ups across Cornwall. Uh, in Liverpool, Niall Rogers on a video call said to us, for me, collaboration is everything because the co in STEAM Co stands for collaboration. It's not company, we're STEAM Collaboration CIC. We want to be a framework for all sorts of organisations. And so we, we had our next year was called Collaborate 20. We did a, launched it with a project with Barclays and uh, Google, and then obviously COVID struck. We've got a government grant. So I built myself a green screen studio, which is obviously where I am now. I haven't got time to show you that really. I've got about two minutes left, I think. So I better keep talking quickly. Um, but using that last year, we built a cardboard Coventry Cathedral and we live streamed from that. And the children at a school in Coventry, a month before Coventry 2022 started or 2021, we actually had them performing on that stage just up there. Children on green screens at home were performing on that stage. The tower took off, it was fantastic. And then we toured that all around the UK as well. 
Talking of touring, I kicked this year off the Ignite 22 Festival by going up to John O'Groats in that camper van. I rent it as I need it every for a couple of weeks at a time. It's almost as not much dearer than an Airbnb. And we launched the Ignite 22 Festival, a year-long festival of creativity co-created in and with school communities. And that's really where we're at now. So I've been traveling around the country doing pop-ups in this camper van because I built that green screen studio into the back of the camper van. And if I had the petrol money, I would have probably driven to Paisley and live streamed from the pavement and got people's reactions. And I'd love to talk to yeah, uh, Sam and his team about how we might do that. I think you find this fascinating. So we live stream um, the children think we're actually on a cardboard Mars base camp in the playground and as you saw in the video earlier we actually fake it and use lots of CGI uh, to actually deliver that and so it looks as if I'm actually on that set but I'm actually not I'm in the back of a camper van another thing I don't want to get labeled as is a massive Elon Musk fan for the sake of it but if we can't use the story of a boy who read every single book in the school library as a child and changed the world and done his green bits with the electric cars and solar panels and now SpaceX and I mean it's an inspiring story and I believe we have to tap into that. So we're delighted that Elon Musk's one of his SpaceX missions funded us um, for a couple of months last year which is absolutely fantastic and we're now announcing our million 22. We want to raise a million quids as you saw to inspire a million kids by getting 22 of these trucks on the road which contain everything you need to run a steam code day in a school community. Uh, we're doing another collaboration with JR. We're going to get a million of these I Love Art pictures produced, hopefully, if we get a million. And we want to display them on the Houses of Parliament using an AR app that JR is launching. That's top secret, so don't tell anybody that. That's coming out later this year. And this week, you may know, is to, today actually is the would be the 72nd birthday of Sir Ken Robinson. Uh, and this week and this month, his daughter with her husband Anthony is running the Imagine If Festival, a festival to celebrate his life and in the next couple of weeks we're supposed to do it last night but I've got some family health issues going on um, we had to cancel it so basically we're going to be doing a co-creation event to co-create ideas to, for that event so if anybody wants to run an event be part of something just put our Ignite 22 logo and it's going to be the loosest most most relaxed and co-creative event possibly <laughs> known to man then that's something to, to hopefully look out for thanks so much I think I just about come in on to, well 11 minutes I'm sorry about that it was supposed to be 10 um, but yeah, that's me. Thanks so much for the time, Jamie. I really appreciate the chance to, to share that with you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Nick. And I say, as someone with small children myself, uh, anything that involves rockets is always going to be popular. <laughs> and uh, as somebody whose dad came from Coventry, I love the uh, the cardboard Coventry Cathedral's way to bring people back in touch during the, uh, the <laughs> pandemic. So thank you so much, Nick. And as we say, we'll share details of people's uh, projects and so on uh, after the event today.